So far, our mold mesh game is starting to take shape. I can play it, I can start incrementing my score, but that's about it so far. So let's go back to the blocks, to the designer window, and add a couple more features here. One of those is I want to bring out a button that allows me to reset the game. So let's call this the reset button. And the text should be, say, reset. Um, I don't really like the idea that this is on top of the score or below the score, so let's also do a layout and put them both on the same row. So I'm going to bring out a horizontal arrangement, make the width to be fill the parent, and if I scroll down here, I can bring the reset button followed by the score just like so. Great. So now let's go to the blocks editor. When the reset button is pressed, when the reset button dot click, when this event handler is called, I want to reset the score to zero. So I'll call the variables block and set that global score to the value zero. And then notice what I really want to have happen next is updating that score label dot text. Well, that's basically calling this block of code over again. So just to re-emphasize this idea of a procedure, let's develop another procedure. In this case, call it update score. Update score is basically going to be that block of code. It's going to update that score label dot text to be the score followed by whatever that variable happens to be. And so notice that that procedure will be used a couple of different places. Whenever the mole sprite image is touched, I want to call update the score. Right after it's updated that the global score value. Similarly, when the reset is but button is pressed, I'll set the score to be equal to zero, and let's call update score once again. So now, if I bring in my, my game and press the reset button, score goes back to zero, right? And the game still plays fine. Great. There are several additional extra features that we can add to this app to make it more interesting. So the first thing to do is to go to the designer window and go under the media drawer here and pull out a sound and add that to the app. Let's rename that sound to be a vibration sound. And while we're here in the, the designer window, I'm also going to add an additional label. Let's call this label game over label. and set the font size to be a little bit bigger, say 24, set the, the text to be game over. And I'm going to initially set that visibility to be, to be off. So I want it to be, the visible to be hidden, so it doesn't see to be game over initially. All right, so that, that component's still there, but you just can't see it at this point in time. All right, great, go back to the blocks editor. One of the things we can do with that vibration sound is I can vibrate. I can have the phone you know, use the vibration to, to tell it, the user when it actually hit the, the mole. So I'm going to drag out that call vibration sound dot vibrate and put that into that mole image sprite dot touched block. About 100 milliseconds is an appropriate value for the vibration to occur when the mole gets hit. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is clean up my blocks window here a little bit by, by collapsing some of these blocks to give me a little bit of more, more space. So um, that's about good. Great. So one small issue with this app is that it never really ends, right? The, the mole can be tapped as many times as you want to and there's never a game over scenario. You never win the game. So let's change that. I want to check to see if you tap the mole and if the score is greater than a certain value, then let's display that game over label. 
So under the control drawer here, I'm going to bring out this if block. This is a very important block. It's going to check to see if something is true, then execute this code. If that component there is not true, then that code here will not get executed. So one of the things that might be interesting is, I'm going to pull out this funny looking equal sign block here. I'm going to check to see if one thing is greater than or equal to another thing. Namely, if I'm going to get that score, if that's greater than, say, the value of 10, greater than or equal to 10, then let's say that's the end of the game. So I'm going to plug in that component here. If it is, then that game over label should become visible. So set the game over label dot visible, that should be true. So under the logic drawer, make that true. So we can see the fact that the game is over. All right, so let's put that inside here and take a look at the effect that has on our app. So I'm playing it. It's not greater than 10 yet. There it is. So it says game over. In order to stop the mole's movement after the game is over, I need to add an extra block here. I need to tell that timer clock to stop ticking. So I can do that by going under the timer clock and finding the block that says timer enabled, set timer clock that timer enabled, and make that sure that that is false. That'll essentially stop the clock from ticking once the, once the score is greater than 15. So, right, if I click on it here, and notice the, scheme, the score is greater than 15, the clock is stopped, the mole is no longer moving around. Where when I press the reset button, I probably want to, you know, enable that timer again. So I'm going ahead and just copy that block and paste it and under the reset bet button, make sure that that becomes true again. So now when I press reset, right, the score is reset and the mole is bouncing around. Do you see a problem though? The game over is still available, still, still visible. So let's set the game over visible to be equal to false. So now when I press reset, game over goes away, and I can play the game. And when, right, when it gets more than 10, game over again appears and the mole stops. One other maybe caveat here that you might wanna to add to your code is that notice that I was able to click the mole several times kind of in one sitting here. If the, goal, the, the, the score is greater than 10, it's gonna do these things. If it's not greater than 10, I can add an extra component to this if block. By clicking on that gear, I'm gonna add an else to it. So that's going to, what's gonna happen here is that if it's greater than 10, it'll do these things. If it's not greater than 10, well maybe I move the mole again as soon as it's clicked. So I'm going to have another procedure call to that move mole. All right, so now watch what happens. As soon as I click the mole, it's gonna change position. So I can't have more than one click at one position. Makes it a little bit more challenging. As soon as I get to 10, game over. There you go. So go ahead and implement the mole mash game. Several really important concepts here, including procedures and if statements and if then else statements.